Welcome. Today I'm with Dimitri Victor at the opening of his solo show, Welcome to the Neighborhood. Uh, this is a panel hosted by Moss, uh, Miami Art Stories, and it's at Diafano, a great gallery that supports and platforms local artists. All the proceeds go directly to the artist. The gallery does not take a cut. Um, so to start off, Welcome to the Neighborhood. What neighborhood is this about? Um, so it's not a specific neighborhood. It's kind of just like an imaginary neighborhood that I made up where it's just like I took a bunch of different experiences that black people would go through and I kind of put them all together to kind of make like a neighborhood. So like when you're walking through, you can kind of see like um, like experiences or depictions of things that you probably went through yourself. And you're just like, oh, I remember growing up and seeing that. Or, oh, like I saw that across the street. Or, oh, this is like reminds me, whatever, whatever. But I was just talking to some people and they said it reminds them of like Miami. So I guess it's just up to interpretation. It could be whatever neighborhood you want to, it to be. I just know that like I took elements of things that you would see in a neighborhood and combined them. So there's like beaches and like there's parties and there's like uh, those neighborhoods and like streets and all that. Okay, so just to backpedal a, bit, what, a bit, what is your origin story? Like, did you grow up in Miami? Um, okay, so I was born in Haiti and then I came to America when I was like three and then I actually grew up in Broward. Um, and I went to school in Miami. And so like, I graduated, so like, I'm in Broward again. But uh, basically, the reason I started making art was because when I was younger, um, I would go to church with my parents. My parents were very religious. So they'd go like three times a week, sometimes four. So I'd always fall asleep, because like, I'm four. I don't know what they're talking about. So. But they keep waking me up. They won't. They won't want me like to fall asleep. So my mom would give me like these sheets of paper. She's just like, do something with them. And then I was like, okay. <laughs> so so one day I remember, who was it? Um, I think it's either Nickelodeon or Disney. They have like these little segments where like the animators kind of show you like how animations are made or like uh -huh. how to draw. And then I saw it and I was like, shit, I could do that. Like you know, it doesn't seem that hard. So then when I was at uh, church. I was like, well, I got nothing to do. I might as well try. So then I just was drawing. And so like people started to see it and they're like, oh, you're a good artist. And they might have just been lying. But to me, I felt like I was the best artist. So I was like, oh, I could do this. So like it was my mission to kind of be like the best that I could be. So I just kept doing it and doing it and doing it. And then now I just keep doing it. Awesome. Yeah. And so in your statement at the beginning of the show when you walk in you mentioned that you're taking reference from cartoons uh like what cartoons in particular do you feel like kind of informed your style i don't think it's any like specific cartoons it's like a variety of them mm -hmm. so there's like um like cartoons from the 60s um anime there's like uh comic books that i grew up on because i was like i'm still i still am a, a comic book nerd so like i love comic books um like the cartoons that I grew up on, like um, Fairly Odd Parents, SpongeBob, stuff like that. So a lot of like the expressions on the, some of the people, like they're kind of just like whacked out or like, you know, they look kind of crazy mm -hmm. because like I was kind of inspired by like cartoons. But then it also take like, a lot of inspiration from like artists in, like in the past. So like the whole like narrative about calling this like a neighborhood was kind of based on like uh, Carrie James Marshall and okay. like how he had this one series I think it was like in the 90s where he kind of made like um, the neighborhood that he grew up in, like the projects in LA. And I thought that was such a cool idea because it's like just make the whole exhibition kind of just like the, the place you grew up in. And I wanted like to spin on that, like make a spin on it, about it and just make my own neighborhood. So it doesn't have to be like that specific place. It could just be wherever, whatever you want it to be. Yeah, I definitely get that feeling of, you know, these kind of familiar markers that a lot of people can sort of project their own stories into. Mm -hmm. um, especially even the titles, you know, like we we got food at home is like a yeah. pretty like, very like well recognized sort of phrase that immediately conjures an image. And I think a lot of that is largely due to the internet. Mm -hmm. And I think I can sort of feel that informing some of the titles mm -hmm. and images as well, that sort of the internet can sort of take personal experiences and transmute them into symbols. Mm -hmm. And symbols are a much like simpler sort of thing. So symbols can like lead you right back to a different personal connection. Yeah. So you've kind of like create these portals. Yeah. Honestly, 
I always say this, but if the internet didn't exist, I wouldn't be an artist. Cause like I didn't even, I wasn't classically trained. I didn't go to school for this. So like what I would do to get better, I would just go online, go on YouTube, just learn how to draw from YouTube. Like, um, and then just even sharing the work. Like the only reason I'm able, cause right now I'm a full-time artist. And the only reason I'm able to do it is because of the internet. Like everything I do is because of the internet. And then it's easier to reach people because of the internet. Like there's like a lot of people here or there's some people here. They're like, oh, I follow you on Twitter or I follow you here. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like they would have never found me if it wasn't yeah. for the internet like because I didn't know where to start and I didn't have any help to be like oh you have to do this or you have to do that I just kind of like figured it out that's so interesting you say that because mm -hmm. I was just having a conversation with a friend where we were kind of pondering the opposite situation like would certain writers and artists have made work if they didn't have the internet like if they had the internet because it's also so distracting mm -hmm. I think a lot of like it yeah, it takes our pr productivity away and our create creativity away. Like the doom scroll yeah. can be like, yeah, just I can't imagine, you know, what what if Shakespeare had Twitter and just <laughs> spent all day just like shit posting and never wrote a play? I think I think <laughs> I think Shakespeare would be very inspired by Twitter. Yeah, I think there's like a lot of things that you could go online and see and just like that's such a crazy situation. Yeah, like I've heard um, I've heard like stories that are like Twitter threads becoming like movies and stuff like that like I, th I think it's just all like based on perspective yeah because I'm, I'm pretty sure there was lazy people back in Shakespeare's time True. right but like True. we just don't remember them because they were lazy yeah so I'm pretty sure if Shakespeare was alive today maybe he would have been greater because it would have been easier yeah so that's just my thought on it though no that's a good perspective I think yeah it's every in every person's life no matter what era there's mm -hmm. temptation to not pursue what you really want to do, yeah. I guess. And the internet is just something that we're all involved in, and it is built by corporations that want you to stay on there yeah. and don't want you to go outside and yeah. do other stuff and put like thought into action. Yeah. So it's yeah, it's I guess about having a good frame of mind. Got corporations kind of, <laughs> <laughs> man, they kind of have like a huge influence on my work too, which yeah. is kind of crazy that you say that. Like, so. Um, if anybody's like an artist that posts, like they know like there's algorithms, right? So mm -hmm. to posting. So if you post, if you take too long to post, like nobody sees it. If you post too much, then you're, you know, like it gets lost in the feed too. So you got to like find a sweet spot to post and you got to post different type of content. You got to post videos and like pictures mm -hmm. and like make your life look interesting and do all these things, right? Yeah. So like um, a lot of the small paintings that I have here actually like um, my girlfriend knows this, but I, I I did them because I felt like I couldn't keep up because I, I like to make big work. Mm. A big work takes too long. So I wanted to do like something that, okay, one, I can do it really fast. Two, I can kind of like show the message that I'm trying to like convey without mm -hmm. it having to like mess up like the other stuff that I have. And then three, um, just making more people see me because like at the end of the day, all I want to do is be seen. Like what's the point of doing all of this and nobody's seeing it, right? Even if I don't get money off of it, like at least somebody can see it, you know? Mm -hmm. So... A lot of the small works, like, I would just, every day, I would just crank them out. Like, just wow. do them every day. Because I know, like, the algorithm likes that stuff. So, just keep posting them. It'd be like, um, I take a notebook paper and, like, paint on it, post that. and Because nobody can see the sizes mm -hmm. online. It's just a screen. Yeah. So, it could be, like, really tiny. It doesn't matter as long as it looks good. So, it kind of influenced, like, how I was, like, making work. And I don't know if it was for the better or for the worse. But we'll find out later, yeah. I guess. <laughs> I think it's always good to have some sort of, like, concrete reason to finish things. Mm -hmm. It's really easy to drag your feet and be a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. And it can also slow you down in a lot of ways. Yeah. So, I mean, I think this show has a good balance of, I think, works that probably took you longer yeah. and less time. And I, it's funny you say that it was, like, Instagram motivated you to make the smaller works. Because something I initially thought when I started looking at them was that they have a sort of photographic like composition like mm -hmm. a lot of them sort of remind me of the way that you can crop in or out focus on smaller details whereas the larger paintings have like a much more like grand sort of composition i'm glad you said that that i like that that was the whole point like you got it spot on that's crazy <laughs> like that, <laughs> i was um yeah so like i'm really into films right and i love like when you're watching a film and it's like a really like deep close of, mm -hmm. of just something and it's like so intense and like it might not even be like a, the huge or most powerful thing, but like that close up or like 
how close you are to it, it makes it a lot more intimate and it makes it seem a lot more important. And I use that for those smaller pieces mm -hmm. primarily. I think like a lot of things that you might not really consider like a like a happy meal box is cool, but like if it's if it's just from afar, you don't really think too much of a happy yeah. meal box. But then when it's like when it's really up close, you, you ask yourself like why is it up close? You know, mm -hmm. you, you keep asking questions. Same thing with like the shoes hanging. It's like, why, why is it so up close? It, all of them. Um, so yeah, that was the whole point. And then like the ones that are like more bigger, it's just more to kind of um, show more of the world, like the neighborhood. Yeah. So yeah. I feel like the close ups give you more of like a tenderness and intimacy, like seeing a hand grip the handle of a Happy Meal box. Mm -hmm evokes a lot more than a Happy Meal box being an element yeah. in an image. It's the subject now, yeah. and it, it's more of an emotional relationship. Yeah. And as well with uh, this like barbershop sort of image, mm -hmm. you get this like tenderness and kind of, it feels like it's more about love in this way, about how yeah. we take care of each other. Yeah. And yeah, it's a, that reads a lot differently than if you were to see the overall image of like a whole room. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Like a lot of artists that I know would probably be like, "Oh, you know, I just do it because it looks cool." But I'd be lying. Like everything is intentional. And um, if you know me, like you, you know, like I, I pay attention to all the details. So the color palettes, like the 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 positioning of like the bodies, like the composition of everything, um, the, how close it is, it's all intentional. It's like nothing is just like, oh. I just want it to be that close because it looks cool. Like, I, I know. Like, I, I spent a lot of time studying, um, like, how to evoke certain emotions from certain paintings. And, like, I would learn that, like, okay, if a painting is, like, composed this way, kind of gives off this, like, type of, uh, uh, like, feeling. And then if the colors are like this, if the colors are like this, you know, then people get this type of emotion from it. So mm -hmm. everything is intentional. And, like, what you're saying, like, about the barbershop, I did that on purpose. You know, everything that you mentioned so far, like, it was all done intentionally. Okay, so let's go more into those intentions. I see, like, a very, like, a big variety in the styles that you choose to depict certain things. Mm -hmm. So in some paintings, you have these sort of, like, underpainting elements where you still see the contours and planes of the faces while the rest is, like, fully fleshed out yeah. and, like, classically rendered. So what is, like, the concept for you for leaving the eyes blank? Because that has, like, a really powerful... Yeah and kind of like a little bit unnerving. Yeah, um, that's honestly the, the whole point. Like it's just to be unnerving. Um, and also it just depends on like, like how, like the colors, like I was saying. So if I leave the eyes um, like blank, but it's a very colorful setting, mm -hmm. it looks almost cartoonish, right? If I leave the eyes blank and the, the color palette is a lot darker, it seems very grim and like dark, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just all based on like what I want to accomplish. Um, in that in that moment, um, so so for the underpaintings though, sometimes I just leave them like that because I feel like when things are too perfect, it kind of it kind of takes away from the painting a little bit. Like I mm -hmm. love realism and I love like some hyper realism, but sometimes it's a little too perfect, and like it's easy to just copy an image. Like I I respect artists that do it, mm -hmm. but at the same time, like if you're trying to really convey an emotion mm -hmm. and like try to make something that people haven't really seen before, yeah, then it's like best to kind of just defy expectations. That's one thing that I learned about like it's any type of art. Like if you're listening to music and like an artist does a beat change or a beat uh -huh. switch, you're like whoa, and it makes you listen closer, right? Yeah. If you're looking at a painting and then like a painter just leaves something like not painted, you're like. What the, like why keeps you on your toes yeah it keeps you on your toes and yeah. it makes you pay attention to it more than if it wasn't and also the the size of them affected it too because um because like i, I had like a such a small canvas to work mm -hmm. with was for some of them i had to like do my best to kind of like get attention like get your attention like i want someone to look at it and be like oh what's this so i think defying expectations that way also helps grab the viewer that's looking at it but then also the titles of those pieces are like like there's the unnerving element of the blank eyes and the underpainting, but then they all have like these very like peaceful titles like therapy session mm -hmm. and uh, tranquility mm -hmm. and yeah. So what is like that sort of tension between like the sort of like I got from the tranquility piece that sort of like calmness and like unencumbered feeling you get when you kind of remove yourself from all of your like worldly ties. You're just mm -hmm. sitting in a field. You're not thinking about you know like 
your social life or bills or work or anything. You're just like in a field being a yeah. human is what I got from it. But then you have that sort of unnerving element. So what is, um, what is that sort of so about? So personally, I feel like that like life isn't just good and bad. Mm -hmm. It's not just happy and sad, right? So if I'm making a neighborhood, it just feels kind of like it doesn't make much sense for me to just make it like one thing. Like, mm -hmm. just, oh, this is very bad. This is very sad. This is not how it is. So a lot of the uh, paintings, well, not even a lot. I think all of them, they're like, it, I take like a bad thing and, and put it on his head or like switch it. So uh, in the therapy session when I'm talking about like uh, mental health it's with black people, especially like black women, but I still wanted it to be like, you know, look colorful and happy because, mm -hmm. like, even though somebody might be in a bad situation, they're not gonna wanna, like, they're not gonna wanna look bad, you know? Especially, like, black people. I think oftentimes I get annoyed with, like, depictions of black people and they're, they're very, like, sad or they're, they're, they're dying or whatever, you know? I think you can still talk about a negative topic without making the people in the, like, the painting, mm -hmm. like, they don't have to go through that bad thing themselves, you know? So for a therapy session specifically, like it's a black woman and she might feel like a little anxious and like because she's at therapy, she she doesn't want to open up. Uh, but that doesn't mean she has to like look all weak and stuff. Like she she could she could still look sexy, you know. She could you know. But also it's like like I said, it's the it's a balance, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't also I also don't want to like depict them in a way that's like overly like satirical, where it's like oh it just looks like a this looks like a like a dumb version of like how what a black woman would look like. But I don't also want it to look like, like, um, like a tone, like two toned down. Mm -hmm. So it's just about finding a balance. So like I, I do that on purpose. Like yeah. it's just a gray area. You can it can still be a bad topic, but still look happy because yeah. that's just how life is. You know. Yeah. That's how these people's situations are. Um, yeah. All of them. Yeah, it's the multifaceted, like, yeah. condition of life. Good, good and bad things and things in the middle happen all at once and that's what a neighborhood is you know yeah, but, someone's having the best day of their life and somebody's having the worst day of their yeah, life but also like with black people or just marginalized communities in general like if you're in a bad situation or a shitty situation you don't necessarily know sometimes like if you especially if you grew up in that you don't know it's bad you just kind of see it for what it is like it's just a normal day mm -hmm. like if somebody is shooting at you and you grow up thinking like oh getting shot at something cool or having guns or something cool, you're not seeing it in a way that's like, oh my God, I'm getting shot, like I'm about to die. Like, sometimes people get shot and they're just like, they're happy they got shot because they're just like, oh, it's a badge of honor, mm -hmm. right? And then there's other people, you know, like it's just, it's just all based on perspective. So I kind of want to show that too, like even though something could be seen as bad, mm -hmm. it's not bad to these people. Like the people in those situations don't see it as bad. Yeah. So it's kind of like, kind of like irresponsible and like, um, incorrect of me for, to show it that way yeah can we talk about the painting behind us the Isn't block it? is hot oh yeah that's i like, feel like that's a perfect time to talk yeah, about yeah. it <laughs> <laughs> that's like the the main one i was talking about so mm -hmm. like um the whole story behind it was because one day i walked outside during the summer it was hot as hell and i was pissed off because it was so hot and so i wanted to know like why like, does, does it being this hot actually make me mad? Or am I just mad because I'm a terrible person, you know? I wanted to know. So I searched up, and then there was a study that says, like, you know, the heat has an effect on, like, mm -hmm. your, um, your emotions. And also, like, during the summer, there's, like, a lot more crime and mm -hmm. stuff. And especially, like, in those communities, there's a lot more crime and, like, violent crime and, like, deaths and stuff. But I kind of wanted, like, to flip it on its head, like I was saying, like, what I usually do. So I flipped it on its head, and I showed, like, someone getting shot at like during the summer but he doesn't really seem phased by it and he still has his like jewels on and he's just blowing a bubble because he's like so whatever you know this is like this is just my life um and that's how it is for those people in those communities because the more you, like, i was searching it up i'm like why does somebody talk about that like mm -hmm. you always see like this thing happened during the summer this thing just happened but nobody talks about like why and no one nobody and two uh nobody really interviews or talks to the people in that situation like how do they feel about it and i know some people in that situation and it's like when they when you talk about it to them it's just like it's whatever like they don't really care it's like it's just normal it's just another reality to them and i kind of just want to show that like that's just his reality that's the block is literally hot both ways you know yeah this image is it's also just so strong 
from a, com a composition standpoint, I definitely get like, if the smaller pieces are sort of like photographs, these definitely read like dramatic moments in a film. Yeah. You know, like the wide angle kind of peering down, it's from neither person's perspective. Mm -hmm. And like the shadows line up perfectly with the sidewalk yeah. and the street lines and the gun too. Like it's, I definitely can see like the intention and the hand reaching out yeah. like so oversized is just such a good element. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, just have to give you props for <laughs> all the intentions read so clearly and they're really well executed. I feel like when you make like big pieces too, it's so, it's a lot easier to put like smaller details. Mm -hmm. I feel like people can like look at things for like years and years to come and always find something new. Yeah. But when it's like a smaller piece, it's kind of like you look at it and you just kind of run out of things to listen or look at. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I was, I was saying listen. Cause it's like, a, it's like a short song too. Like after yeah. you listen to a short song, it's like there's no, I don't want to keep playing it back over and over unless it's like really, really it grabs my attention. So it's like the same thing with paintings. I think like, um, like a big painting is like the time to kind of like really make it a whole thing. Mm -hmm. Same thing with like long songs. Like there's like nine minute songs. Fill it with moments and yeah. improvisations. Yeah, exactly. And things exactly. to, yeah continually kind of take out from it. Mm -hmm. I noticed that a lot in, well, this one as well, because of the writing on the sidewalk too, you have all mm -hmm. these like smaller details. And then over here, you can even see, that's your initials on the ring that yeah, he's wearing. Is. So is this like a, <laughs> a self-portrait of like your 10 year plan or? Nah, nah, it's not. <laughs> Honestly, I just, yeah. <laughs> so since, Oh man, this is gonna sound corny. Wow. Uh, so because it's my neighborhood, I thought, well, wouldn't it be cool if I was like the superstar in my own neighborhood, right? Like, <laughs> you know how people have like Louis Vuitton rings and Gucci this or whatever. So it's like, why why not just make me the one like they want to look up to, right? Yeah. I'm the creator. Like, yeah. I can do whatever I want. So, <laughs> so in my in my mind, he, he's he might be in a Rolls Royce, but like he's wearing my designer jewelry, like. He wants to be me. So I, that's, that's the reason I kind of put it there. It wasn't even like, because that's what I think I'm going to be like. I don't know what I'm going to be like. I do know I want a Rolls Royce, but I don't know if I look like him. But um, <laughs> yeah, I just thought that would be like a really cool thing to add. The story behind that one is like pretty, pretty cool too. Yeah, can you tell it? Um, yeah, yeah, so like, okay. So oftentimes when I go to museums and like with black art, um, I love black art, but like sometimes, you know, like after a while, like you see certain topics and you kind of see like trends, right? Mm -hmm. So galleries like to show things that, you know, are popular. So if there's like a trend right now, they're, they're probably going to be more focused on showing this certain type of thing. And so uh, I wanted to kind of show like um, a black person like in wealth and opulence, but like flip it on its head again. That's what I love doing. So I flipped it on its head. So instead of showing just a dude, a black guy in a Rolls Royce, I want to show him like geeking, which is like, so there's two meanings for that. And I, I was telling someone this before, like I wanted the two meanings, like the double meanings of the painting. So either you might look at it and think, oh, he's happy in that painting. You know, he's geeking, like, because geek, geeking means happy. Mm -hmm. But then geeking also means like you're on drugs and you're just like, like geeking hard, like you're on like a pills or whatever. So uh, based on like how you see it or perceive it, you might think, oh, this dude's on drugs. <laughs> or you might think or see it and be like, oh, he's so happy. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that, that's why I did it. I just kind of wanted to show that, and I just thought like that perspective would be cool, like showing him with inside the car. That one was actually inspired by uh, anime too. Which yeah. Is, yeah, cartoons and everything. Because cartoons always have like weird perspective perspectives. Mm -hmm. So if really I got exaggerated emotion, exaggerated like that, that whole perspective makes no sense in a real life like <laughs> yeah. point of view. Like it doesn't make any sense, but like. It's really hard to kind of like um, make it make sense, but also making it exaggerated. So I like took inspiration from like cartoons and stuff and like how they look inside of cars. And I just kind of like made my own version of that. Yeah. You're like a dream car. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know, I always say this, if I can't afford it, why not? Can't, why can't I just paint it until I can't afford it? That's a, that's a really good idea. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the same way here that it's like he could either be on drugs or just really happy. I feel like that's also really present in this one. Mm -hmm. um, it really has this like, what I got from it is like the intensity of 
like anger and also ecstasy you get when you like just like mm. blow off steam it's like you get to sort of like transform yeah. like intense emotions and like redirect yeah. in like any way and like the mouth sort of there's this one mouth that's sort of almost like floating out yeah. over another yeah. guy's <laughs> chin it's like just like so abstracted and the guy behind him also is like again it's like is yeah. that like a moment of just like everybody being so happy but it's yeah. also like kind of um, jarring so so that painting was actually inspired by dance halls so like i would see like videos of like dance halls and they're like the funniest shit to me like i don't, I don't know <laughs> i don't know what these people are on but i just love the energy like they're just so happy and like nobody judges them you know uh -huh. like people just go there and they're just having fun and i thought that was like a cool thing that kind of just like the pick you know and show that and like I remember um, watching like one dance hall video, and this dude, <laughs> he was just like he was just smacking the shit out of somebody. I don't know why, <laughs> but like they're just having fun with it. And I was like, that's so funny. So I didn't want to like literally show somebody smack getting smacked, but I was like, what if they just like shaking them, you know? Yeah. Because he's so excited. Because my friends do that to me too. Like they get excited, just be like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to do that, but yeah, that is just another element of the neighborhood. Because even though there's violence or they mm -hmm. might be violence and all this stuff like there's still parties going on mm -hmm. which is like typical of um black neighborhoods or uh, marginalized communities or ones that are bad you know mm -hmm. that's just how it is it's not all bad things mm -hmm. yeah someone was telling you recently that there's some study that like holding like baby kittens and babies like can make you angry like the way you just like want to squeeze a kitten so hard because it's so cute it's like i think there is actually something there psychologically with like being so happy or like so excited that it like makes you kind of violent <laughs> yeah you're just like you can't contain all the emotion in your yeah. body man listen honestly sometimes i think like humans are just we're fucked up people man yeah. like you know i you know, obviously you don't say it much because we're human ourselves but like uh -huh. when you think about it like why because I have the same feeling, too. Sometimes I, want to, I see a dog, and I'm just like, Ugh. Yeah. But well, why? I don't know. I just feel like humans, like, they're just, we're just weird creatures. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's, it's cool. Because, yeah. you know, those same, us, like, being weird creatures is what, you know, causes all this cool art. Mm -hmm. and I think that's so dope. Yeah. I also feel like these, these lines you have sort of, like, interlacing between people, it feels like a, the common, like, thread that, like, mm -hmm. connects everybody. Um, or something so those it's also like a part of my style so like when i was younger i would like just add like random lines and then i thought like this time it'd be really cool to just add the lines just to kind of signify movement because mm -hmm. obviously there's a lot of movement in there but to make it more exaggerated you know like just yeah. add lines to literally kind of guide your eye yeah so like when you're mm -hmm. looking at it you're like looking at the parts that i want you to see so it goes from like left and then it goes under the guy's arms and it it goes under the guy's arms to the left and it goes up to so you can see the guy's face there uh -huh. and then it goes to that to the one on the right and then there's, you just you go to the figure that's like shaking the dude and then you see the the yeah. face on the top right smiling and that line guides you to the one below it and then eventually you look down to see the guy with the green hair at the bottom yeah yeah it definitely it like makes your eyes dance with it you know you're yeah. moving around it it also kind of reminds me of like light trails and yeah. like a party photo or something. Yeah, I could, I could see that. I could see that. Yeah, I, I was thinking a lot about this when I was just looking around the room. Somebody told me about this concept called the left handshake, which is mm -hmm. basically like your right handshake is when you meet someone and it's like a surface level, like social agreement of like, hello, my name is, how do you do, mm -hmm. who are you? And the left handshake is like the unspoken, like unconscious way that we recognize something familiar in other people. Yeah. It's just when you meet someone and you start to sort of infer things without really talking yet. Mm -hmm. I feel like the sort of universal mixed with the personal is like a left handshake between like the viewer and the work, mm -hmm. sort of. Yeah, yeah, I can see that, I can see that. I think I probably, I probably emphasize a lot of the left handshake in my, in my work. I love, I love like familiar things. Like I love nostalgia. Well, at a, at a I love nostalgia to a ex certain extent. I think too much nostalgia is a bad thing, but a decent amount is good, though. In, in what way is it bad? Because sometimes people, especially now, I feel like with a uh, culture and a lot of art, like people are too obsessed with what happened in the past, or they mm -hmm. try to like recreate things from the past, mm -hmm. and it just ends up being the same things from the past instead of like newer things. Like 
Um, I was having this conversation like recently, like in terms of like music, there's a lot of like reworked like songs with yeah. like very he heavy samples, right? Yeah. But then it's like if we use so many samples from like the past, uh -huh. it just sounds like the past. And so if you think about it, like what sound right now defines you know the 2020s? Mm -hmm. Then I'm asking you. No, I don't know. <laughs> He's like, yeah, nobody knows, it's, it's, right? <laughs> we're kind of in like a post like I feel like it's just like yeah, it's a mix of like all the popular moments yeah. sort of just being cycled through. Same with movies, right? All the yeah, reboots. Yeah, movies. Um, right now, I don't. Want to, I wouldn't say with like art, it's like that because mm -hmm. there's a lot of cool artists right now. Like and technology is like yeah. allowing us to sort of, you know, there's new mediums to work with. Mm, yeah, exactly. But I think also technology is the reason why mm -hmm. nostalgia is such a big thing. So. Yeah, so I, I think, like, if you keep getting too obsessed with, like, nostalgia, there's just, like, no room for growth. Mm -hmm. And I think, like, in, in the long run, like, looking, when people look back on history and, like, look back in, like, the 2020s, and it's, like, just filled with things that was just, like, from the 2000s, it's, like, you just, people are just going to skip over it, you know? And yeah. I don't think that's a good thing. I think, like, there should be a lot more, like, stuff, um, like, or new original things, like, being put out. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I also wanted to ask you, you don't have any on display, but I did see on your Instagram some really great charcoal drawings. Yeah. So I just wanted to ask maybe like, what is your, I mean, it looks like you favor painting, like over drawing. And I've also seen like some sort of like pre-painting sketches, like for, I think it was this one or maybe another one you didn't have on no, view. No, it was definitely that one. Okay. I'll, post, I'll post it that one. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, it's crazy that you say that. Like, I didn't start painting till like, two or three years ago wow i was terrified of painting because i used to just draw because you know how i told you that my mom just gave me the mm -hmm. thing to draw so i would only draw and then someone was like oh you should paint i didn't want to paint <laughs> i just felt it was it looked so intimidating yeah like there was just so much technique and you needed these brushes and you needed like certain paints and you needed like you know trays and all this stuff and mm -hmm. i was like why would i do that if i could just draw like mm -hmm. one it seemed expensive yeah which in retrospect it probably probably wasn't it wasn't that expensive really nah i nah nah it wasn't um and then yeah i just felt like i wouldn't be be as good it was kind of like a, an imposter syndrome thing like you know like when you're really good at one thing mm -hmm. so you're like why would i change that if i'm already good at that one thing yeah and so uh why don't i just become the best at this one thing I'm already yeah good at? exactly yeah. exactly and everybody kept saying oh yo your, your, your drawings look so good as paintings and i was like yeah whatever so then <laughs> one day i forced myself so I, I was uh, an artist that reached out to me from Miami, and they were like, oh, we should collab on something. And I was like, sure, whatever. Um, but mind you, at the time, I didn't know how to paint. And they are like, oh, we should collab on a painting. It's actually, it was actually Drew, Drew Dang. Okay. So Drew, they, they reached out to me, and they were like, oh, we should collab on a painting. But I, I felt so embarrassed to say I didn't know how to paint. So I was like, sure, whatever. <laughs> we can do that. <laughs> I was terrified. Oh and, so, and so the day of, I didn't know shit about painting. So I just got a bunch of paints. And then I go into their studio. And they have like all this shit. And I was like, oh my god. I don't know what I'm doing. So whole time, I'm just like looking at what they're doing and copying it. And then I'm just like painting. And then they're like, oh, you're pretty good at this. And I was like, word? OK. <laughs> so I'm just doing it. And so throughout the whole thing, like, they don't know I don't know how yeah. to paint. Like, that, that just lied saying I could, you know? Uh -huh. And so they're like, yeah, you're good at this. You should, you should, like, make more larger stuff. And I was like, what? Okay. And I just kept doing it. And so, like, I think I started making the larger works, like, literally, like, last year. So this is all new to me, honestly. Did you ever tell them that that was your first time painting? I told them, like, two years after. <laughs> and, like, they were kind of they were kind of shocked but mad because they were like, that's not fair. <laughs> this is what they told me. Like, how the fuck did you just do it? And it, it turned out like that. And I was like, I don't know. That's I, so funny. I don't, I have this type of memory where like when I see someone do things, I can kind of just like do it. Um, only when it comes to like art. It's mm -hmm. not, it's not with other things. I don't want to be arrogant and be like, oh, I can just do whatever. But if I see like an artist doing things and um, I can just kind of figure it out. And also I had like a really good grasp of like color theory. Cause like I already knew like, oh, this color makes that, this makes that. Mm -hmm. It's like I knew all those things. So like when I actually started to paint and I was like mixing colors, I just realized it was color theory. And I was like, oh, this isn't that bad at all. And then I just kept doing it. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So you are, I mean, gifted literally just with, uh, I feel like. 
I don't Come know. On. I don't know. I don't know if I like that term. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I they used to call me gifted in, in like school, but like you know that um that gifted, what's that thing called? It's like gifted kid to like depressed like adult pipeline or something. Oh like my that. god. <laughs> so like, I'm yeah. Like, I don't know if I want to be called that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It's, you do have an intuitive grasp for visual like styles of learning. Let's say that. <laughs> I, honestly, I think it's like one of those things where if you if you um dive into something so deep mm-hmm. it's like all you look at every day like you kind of pick up stuff from it even if you don't realize it mm-hmm. and i think that's what i i did so like i would just always be looking at the art so i think like when i actually started painting like it probably wasn't as hard because like i was so deep into it yeah like i was already so deep into painters and stuff and like i was looking at what they did all the time uh-huh. so then i just copied them so if i saw a painter do something i'd be like well i don't know what the fuck i'm doing but I saw like Basquiat do this, so let me, uh, or I didn't know what the hell this was, but I heard a screen printing, so let me try screen printing for like once or something and did it. Or I don't know what the hell gouache is, but I saw this one artist do it. I'm gonna try it now. And it's just things like that, because I didn't have a teacher, so that was my way of teaching myself. I think that's great to just like go right into it and try it, you know? Yeah. Like the hesitation is what can like hold you back from a lot of stuff. My, my biggest fear is not doing something or like not knowing what could have happened. You know? um, I also wanted to ask you just about the sort of textured style that you have. Some of the paintings, a lot of the paint starts to like verge on 3D. Mm-hmm. So what is like the intention there? I see it in like the hair, but then also in like the flowers and clouds and tranquility, yeah. which are kind of like depicted in like a much more like simple style mm-hmm. than the sort of realism. Um, honestly, this is like the one time I'll just say it looks cool as hell to me. I I would like go to galleries and I see like artists just using all these textures and stuff, and I'm like, that's so cool. Like I haven't figured it out completely, but I just love it, and like I want to learn how to use it. So it's kind of like I'm me slowly easing into it. Um, that's pretty much it. I think also it um emphasizes like certain things that I want people to see. So if like. Uh, I want people to look at the hair, right? If I add textures to the hair, it makes people kind of be like, oh, shoot, his hair, right? And I don't have to, like, make it super detailed. Like, mm-hmm. that's what I kind of like about it. It's, like, super simple, but it it, it kind of says a lot already. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much why I do that. Cool. And then, like, a second-to-last question is you mentioned that a lot of these paintings are sort of taken from personal experience and then also sort of imagination but then also stories from your neighbors and loved ones do you want to talk at all about maybe like some stories in particular or? oh yeah i'm ready for this okay okay so that one over there <laughs> with the happy meal uh-huh. oh man 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 every every fucking week that would happen like, <laughs> <laughs> my parents were immigrants so like obviously you know looking back i don't know how much happy meal cost back then but like it probably wasn't a lot, but every single time I asked for a Happy Meal, they'd be like, we got food at home. We got food at home. We got this at home. Every single time, bro. All I wanted was a Happy Meal. Like, and so eventually I built up like this just like, <laughs> this, this thing in my mind where like the Happy Meal was like the, the big goal, right? Uh-huh. Like if I could get a Happy Meal. You could finally was, be happy. I'd be happy, bro. <laughs> I'd be happy. So then, <laughs> so then one day, um, I got all A's in my report card, and I was like, they're like, what do you want? Because, you know, like, I did good. And I was like, I want a Happy Meal. I want a Happy Meal. So they got me the Happy Meal, and I was so damn mad, bro. That shit was, it was, it was okay. Do you remember the toy? (laughs) The toy you got? Yes, I do. You know, it was, okay, sorry. I'm so sorry for the excitement. Okay, I remember this toy so vividly. This is going to be so stupid. So back then, there was a Lizzie McGuire, uh, the Lizzie McGuire show. And so, like, I wanted a boy toy. And they only had Lizzie McGuire toys. <laughs> so bad. So, <laughs> oh my God, this is embarrassing. So they had a, a Lizzie McGuire CD. And I don't, I guess the CD or DVD had like games on it, like to play online. And so like, so it came with it. And you got a CD with your Happy Meal? Yeah. You don't remember, I never got a CD. Okay. Well, there was a Lizzie <laughs> McGuire CD that came with a Happy Meal one time and I got it. And it wasn't a toy. And I was kind of pissed, yeah. but I, I put it in my computer and I just started playing it. <laughs> and it was actually pretty fire. I mean, <laughs> and I just kept playing it all the time because one, I knew I wasn't gonna get a happy meal for a minute. 
So it's like, I either got to deal with this or just be mad. I don't want to be mad. Like, you're a kid. You're not going to be mad forever. So I was just playing Lizzie McGuire games <laughs> on my computer for a good while. Like, I played it every day. It was, it was bad. I had an addiction. And then, <laughs> and then one day, um, I left it on my bed. And I sat down. Because, you know, like uh, kids, you know, like you just oh. kind of jump. Like, you just like, woo no. <laughs> I just jumped on my bed. CD cracked. Oh my and God. I was like, fuck. Yeah, and then it took me a good, like, three months before I got another Happy Meal toy. That one I remember, too, which is crazy. I remember them all. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's like a collection in my mind. <laughs> um, and then, what else? Um, okay, so the one below it, the, the one with the grills, that one, um, it's like what I was saying before, you know, if you can't afford it, just paint it so you can, right? So I want grills so damn bad. Like, I love grills. Um... I'll probably get them soon, because now I can't afford it. So I, I probably will get them soon, but like, yeah, I just, I find like just grills so nice, right? A lot of people think it's like unprofessional or like ghetto or like whatever, but it's like, yo, know, they, they look so nice to me. And I, I love it. And I love like, especially like, um, like the feminine designs of it, like when girls like have like these crazy designs in them. And I was like, yo, that's so fire. How has nobody painted that? So I wanted to paint that. Um, Cause I just like see like those all the time, and I'm like, wow. Like, I don't know if you ever go like online and you'll see like the girls designs. And sometimes, yeah. Sometimes, so so like yeah, I'll see them all the time, and I'm like, yo, that's fire. Like I I want those. So like now I have like a series where I'm just painting jewelry because like I can't afford it, so I'm just keep painting it till I can. You're painting your wish list. Literally, <laughs> li that's literally what I'm doing. That Rolls Royce is on my wish list too. Like, it's the same, uh, yo. Sorry to get off topic, but that one is like, I, it's based off an actual model. So it's Rolls Royce Phantom, um, newest model actually. I, I looked at like a bunch of car reviews just to make sure I got it like down packed. And then the interior is not like based on anything because you can customize Rolls, like Rolls Royces. So like I customize it to how I would want it. So it's like a cream color in there and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, okay. And I wanted to add more stuff, but it's like, I don't have the car. So I had to like show. So, yeah, because there's just certain things I don't have. Um, but, yeah, like, all of the, all the things. Um, what else? Power lines, just uh, the one that's blue. Mm -hmm. The shoes. Um, growing up, I just see the shoes hanging all the time. I, like, used to ride a, a bus going to elementary school, and I'd see them every day. I didn't know what it meant. I just thought they looked cool. And, like, like I was saying how people, like, in those neighborhoods, they don't know it's a bad thing. Like, this, that was literally me. Like, I was just looking at it like, yo, that's kind of lit. Like, I want to do that. So one, one summer, it was like the beginning of summer, I just threw my shoes up there. My mom whooped my ass, man. It was bad. <laughs> I, just, I thought it was a cool thing. I didn't know it was like some type of thing. Um, yeah, so that's based off of that. Um, the one in the middle was actually based on, off of uh, Solange, which is crazy, because I saw Solange wearing a hat, and it was a cowboy hat, and I was like, yo, that's a dope-ass cowboy hat. But I wanted to know why she was wearing a cowboy hat. Then I found out about um, cowboys in Houston. And also my girlfriend was telling me about it too. She was like, oh, there's like uh, cowboys in like Houston and like Texas and stuff. And they're like black cowboys and cowgirls. And so like I searched it up and I was like, oh, shoot, that's like so dope. Like, why does nobody paint about it? So I wanted to paint that. And then the one on the lower right, that's the dude in yellow. Um, so it's called Selling Your selling your soul at the crossroads and this is actually like like a lore right so there's this dude named ah, damn richard johnson i think that's his name and there's a theory because he's like a he's a black um guitar player and like a black musician and so there's a theory because he says this he made a song about it. it's called selling your soul at the crossroads where he says he went to the crossroads and sold his soul to the devil and I thought that was like so funny because like there's a lot of black entertainers and just like black people were just a lot of celebrities right People have these theories of like, oh, they sold their souls and they're the Illuminati. And I was like, y'all are stupid. Like, it's not, it's not true. Or maybe it is. I, actually, no, nah, no, nah, that's not true. I think, I think. <laughs> Hope I don't know. I don't know if it's true or not. But I thought it would be for like a funny thing to make a painting about it. Kind of like the irony of it. Like, oh, yeah, he did sell his soul. So now what? You know? Yeah, and that's pretty much it for those. Um, there's a lot more about like my experiences here. Could I ask you about the Lost at Sea painting? Oh. It's just such a different style. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like very like realism, 
in how the face is depicted, but it also kind of reminds me of German expressionism because mm -hmm. there's sort of like, it's like like very pronounced features yeah. and like darker contrast. Yeah. You're good at this. <laughs> you're, you're good at this. Thank you. I, I'm kind of <laughs> shocked that you even brought, that was like one of the, that's insane. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was one of the reasons why I did like that. Oh man. Um, but yeah, Lost at Sea, it's, um, so it's about like the relationship between like black people and like the sea, but it's also about how like oftentimes people of color, like as children, they kind of, they're kind of seen as like adults. So like they're put into like adult situations from a very young age right so i thought that'd be cool to kind of show like a young little kid like as a sailor like he's just lost at sea but then um but also like i also wanted to bring up like just the 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 kind of bad history with like black people and this ocean like you know how some people just don't want to swim or like you know slavery and like people just getting thrown off the boats and mm -hmm. stuff like that and like i just kind of wanted to show like you can kind of see like a little fear in his face like he kind of looks a little bit sad you're like mm -hmm. you know um but he's like trying to look tough at the same time and i think that's like how a lot of kids are like even if they're not black right you might be in a bad situation as a kid and you're just kind of told to like, suck it up you know whatever and yeah so i thought it'd be funny to just kind of not funny but i thought it'd be like a cool way of like showing like talking about that but showing it like in a in my own way so it's like mm -hmm. my imagination like oh i would imagine someone like just putting a little boy uh boy on a boat and just sending him off to sea and be like whatever yeah yeah that's really well put i think like the incorporation of history is it's like a lot more subtle and symbolic and emotional that way um a final question that we always end with <laughs> is um what advice you would give to aspiring artists or if not that just like maybe something you would say to your younger self if you had like any doubts like on your path you know it's crazy i i'll probably answer the first one because the insane thing is i don't think i've ever had any doubts like ever since i was a kid i was like i'm gonna be an artist nice. since i was like five and my parents didn't believe me but i'm an artist now uh -huh. so who got the last laugh so <laughs> um but i guess an advice i'd give I'm still a, a new a new artist, an emerging artist myself, so I guess it would just be I don't wanna give like corny advice. Like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna be like, oh keep going. <laughs> but uh Ooh, okay, this is a good one. So I think making the painting is only half the battle. I think like if you really wanna like do art as a career. It's more about like being in the communities, you know, like just talking to people and like making sure uh, that, you know, you show face too. Because how mm -hmm. can you expect people to support you when you don't support others, right? Or how can you like really grow as an artist if you're not going out and like finding out about new artists or like, mm -hmm. um, you know, just talking to different people. And it's not even just about like, you know, painters, mm -hmm. but like you have to talk to like DJs and you got to talk to like photographers and designers and all these people because like you'll get a lot of stuff from them like I learned a lot of stuff from photography like that I implement to this day a lot of stuff from uh, filmmaking that I use to this day same thing with designers like all of that and I feel like if you're not like branching out and going out of your way to do it I don't think it's like it's gonna sound mean but I don't think you should be doing it as a career I feel like sometimes it's okay to do something as a hobby like you don't always have to do it as a career but if you're gonna do something as a career like you have to make sure like you're in it like you're deep in it and you love it and you don't mind being like you don't mind looking like the fool a little bit you know because realistically when people are applying for jobs you get rejected you just apply for another one right and nobody says anything yeah so it's the same thing with art like if you get rejected by uh whatever you apply to or by someone mm -hmm. you know it sucks but you just keep going because guess what you really want that job or you really want that thing so that's what I would say. I would say to just like it, just focus on the people, because that's those the people are gonna be like what kind of put you to that next level. Like they're gonna be the ones to kind of like allow you to get seen. You mm -hmm. know, that's why I'm doing this because you know Steph. You know, I talked to Steph, and Steph is the one who gave me those opportunities. So yeah, that's what I would say. That's great advice. Yeah. Thank you. I think being a lone wolf is is not really beneficial if you want to 
Also, lone wolves are always lying anyways. Nobody's a lone wolf. Yeah. Like We're not born alone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, nobody's a lone wolf. Every Anybody who's successful that says they're a lone wolf is lying. Like, they just, they're just dickheads, honestly. Mm-hmm. Like, you're, just, you're, not cre- you're not crediting anybody with your success. Like, nobody helped you. Yeah. Like, that's insane. Like, what about all the people that buy your stuff? You know, that's, those are people that are helping you. Nobody has to spend money on you. I think that's the thing people don't realize, too, is, like, if you're an artist and somebody buys something from you, they don't have to buy it. They could have spent that money on, like, literally anything. Mm-hmm. And they, if they chose to buy or uh, spend it on you, it's a blessing. So, like, it's not just about you. Like, I think too many people get um, just into their minds. It's, oh, it's about me. Like, I need to do this for me. Mm-hmm. But it's not about you. Like, a person bought the painting because they relate to it. So, it's not just about you. You're making this for everyone to see. Wow. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for joining us for this talk. Uh, thank you to Miami Community Radio, uh, to Shotgun for the space. And I hope you guys stick around for the rest of this. Enjoy the art. Talk to Dimitri. Uh, learn more about all the stories behind everything. Uh, yeah, that's all. Thanks. Yay. Awesome. Nice. You're good at this. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, guys.